Um, I think the gentleman is live or something. <laughs> live on himself. We have come this morning, um, quite a team, because on the advice of the doctor, we saw Dr. Gikonyo last night and what he said. So although we may have wanted to come last night, but we realized that uh, the second deputy president, uh, Honorable Rigadi, needed a lot of time with the doctors. But this morning, we are privileged that Dr. Gikonyo has allowed some of us to, to see him. Um, so um, I have been able to see him along with Dr. Moshmua Eugene Wamalwa and Senator Nyutu um, on behalf of the senators who are here. And so we, we thank God that um, he looks stable. Um, and of course it is upon the doctors to continue concluding uh, the investigations that they were they were doing um, so that is what we can say as of now we all watched what happened in the Senate um, and some of you may have seen the interview that I contacted on citizen television where I predicted <laughs> that things were going to move very, very fast. The whole thing predetermined. Uh, I once was Deputy Speaker of Parliament, and one of the worst mistakes you can make as a legislator is to anticipate debate. The whole National Assembly anticipated the outcome of the deliberations of the Senate. Um, but we want to thank um, the Senators we want to thank the legal as has been said um, it is historic and it's all because of constitution 2010 which is why we are saying he is the second deputy president even as we speak he's still deputy president um, so i was the 10th vice president eugene Romano is the elder brother was what version was it? The eighth. The eighth. Uh, so these things are, are important. It's part of our history. It's part of our heritage as a people. And we are in the process of consolidating our nationhood as a country within the community of nations. But what happened in the Senate last night was as historic as it was, it had serious flaws. And clearly, I think Kenya should expect a protracted uh, legal arguments because we didn't even discuss this with, Dr. with the Honorable Gachagua, but we are aware that his teams have already moved to court. It's expected. Um, and, and as senior counsel, I can tell you, uh, that uh, you cannot, the law of natural justice demands that no person, no person, man or woman, shall be condemned and had. And it was all there. Senior Counsel Paul Muite, leading a very strong team, were able to argue with regard to what the Constitution at Article 145 5B says before the vote, before the Senate took the vote they could only do so after affording an opportunity to Deputy President to defend himself. There are other arguments of course by Senior Counsel Jim Morengo and uh, Tienda Molo on the other side and, uh, uh, and Gumbe yeah. so we, we respect all of that but uh, truth be told um, this whole thing smacks of injustice, gross injustice, political manipulation, and all of us know this is a political trial. And therefore, once again, we want to thank the senators who stood firm on both sides. We can't condemn 
even those who voted for the impeachment, we can't condemn. They did what was their, their responsibility, regardless of what may have happened in the back rooms or wherever. And then the country continues to learn a lot from this impeachment process. So once again, we wish uh, Mashima uh, Rigadi Gachagwa very quick recovery. And we thank God that he has spared his life. He's a giver of life. And by his stripes, we believe that uh, uh, Gachagwa will be healed. Kama kuna kitu mwenzangu angeongeza, anaweza kuongeza, and one senator maybe, and one zua on the uh, kwa kiswahili ndi ni kusema basi ni kusema kwa mba tumemuona eh, pata fursa ya kumuona uh, mashumewa rigadhi gachagwa uh, naibu wa rais wa hamu ya pili chini ya katiba 2010 na tuashukuru mungu kwa mba anaendelea vyema kulingana na report ambayo tumepatiwa na madaktari lakini bado hako na udhaifu na kwa hivyo atunge hata kumzungumzia hata zaidi uh, tuamtakia kila laheri lakini huku tukizidi kumtakia uponyaji haraka atuna budi ila pia kuangazia yaliofanyika jana kwa uh, seneti eh, tawapongeza tawa wale maseneta ambao walichukua msimamo msimamo wake katiba lakini kama wanasheria mimi mwenyewe na jiunga wazi na yale ambayo mheshimiwa uh, senior council uh, Paul Mwiti aliyozungumzia ndio sheria kikatiba na mambo yao na, na, na mahia maneno ni wazi yata yataangaziwa yata kindani sana kwa mahakama and we continue to insist that the last line of defense for the future of this country remains our judiciary. So we want to urge that justice reign even though the heavens may fall, but may justice reign. May justice reign in our courts. May there be men and women able to avoid a situation of state capture as we have said this country country's economy is under state capture or have said it openly before that the legislature itself is under capture executive and we will as a people's loyal opposition continue to talk to kenyans have conversations about that fearlessly knowing that this is a country under God. My colleague can add something. Myself with the comments of our senior counsel, uh, Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, particularly on the issue of violation of the basic rules of natural justice. And he has said one of those basic principles of natural justice is that no one should be condemned and heard. Yesterday was a sad day for this country because His Excellency Regadi Gashagwa, who had submitted himself to the jurisdiction of both houses of parliament and never missed a sitting, never was late, both in the National Assembly and in the Senate, and even when he was given the opportunity to sit as his charges were being read to him, he chose to face his accusers on his feet rather than on his knees. And he stood throughout the reading of the 11 charges. The last two weeks must have been very stressful for him. And as a human being, there's only so much stress you can take. His doctors have told us here today that when he was admitted here, he had serious chest pains. In fact, he had very high blood pressure. The stress he had gone through, he was short of getting a stroke. But they admitted him, they have managed him overnight. 
and we thank Dr. Gikonyo and his able team of doctors for the good care they have given His Excellency regarding Gashagwa. But for Parliament, if we ever doubted that our Parliament is under capture by the executive, a very overbearing executive, last night was our evidence. Our Parliament is dancing to the tune of the executive, both the National Assembly and the Senate. There was no reason why these proceedings could not have been postponed until Saturday. What was the hurry when Speaker King withdrew to his chambers? What were his instructions? We suspect and we believe he was told by stroke of midnight, you must be done with this man. And that is what happened. The law is clear. The rules are clear. If they had a special committee, they had 10 days. We do not have a, a limitation for the plenary. Why was the Senate hired to crucify this man and bury him politically? All we can suspect is that Mutuse was just a hard assassin on a mission. And that was evident throughout cross-examination. And we must thank His Excellency the Deputy President lawyers. They brought out the truth that, and this is what Senator Wambua asked Mutuse, whose motion is this? <laughs> you could tell he was not the owner of the motion. He was just a gun for hire. And through cross-examination, that became very evident. But today, apart from the principle of a man not being condemned and hard, especially when he's on his back in a hospital bed, the second principle that was broken by the House, which is a fundamental principle of natural justice, is that you shall not be a judge in your own cause. The rule of bias is a very basic principle of natural justice. Both speakers of the two houses had been mentioned as shareholders, beneficiaries of an arrangement in Kenya Kwans. They are interested parties. And one of them had in fact, before the matter appearing before him, Speaker Otangula, I think, was in the Machakos County when he showed his bias on a matter coming before him, he had already pronounced himself as to what should happen to regard Gashagwa who was going to appear before him. Open bars were shown by the Speaker, Wetangula, Deputy Speaker, Sholei, Majority Leader, Kimani Shunga, the Chief Whip Osoro, and there could have been a fair trial for regard. So today we want to say this that as a country, we miss an opportunity to showcase that we have one of the best constitutions, not in Africa, in the world, the most progressive. Last night it was being tested. As a country under the rule of law, we should have respected and observed the two principles, fundamental principles of natural justice, and we let our country down. However, all is not over, as His Excellency has said, our last line of defense is the judiciary. We pray and we hope as His Excellency's team appears before court, they will do justice. And this is what the Senate should have done. They were not politicians last night. They were jurors. They were judges. They should have been fair. They should have allowed time for Gashaga to defend himself. But this will be a basic ground upon which I believe the decision of the House can be invalidated and justice shall be done. This, we want to say thank you to our senators, our leader in the Senate, Senator Wambu of Kitui, I think captured everything as NEO stands for. Our leader in the National Assembly, Honorable Robert Mbui, spoke for all of us 
others meal. But their counterparts in ODM spoke a different language. So today, even as we go forward, we can no longer pretend that we are like-minded. On impeachment, we did say this was not a priority for Kenya. Kenyans have more serious issues. Kenyans cannot take their kids to school because of the failed new funding model in our universities. Patients are dying because when you go to hospitals now, dialysis, you are being turned away. When you have no money, you are a poor person, you are condemned to death by William Ruto and his failed policy, Adani Shah. These are issues that even as we speak, as as new, we have differed, not just on this impeachment, not just on joining the bread based government. We have also differed on Adani, and yesterday we were in court led by a senior counsel. Kenyans will on 22nd of October see who is really fighting for them, because we'll be back in court to continue the fight against corruption. In open court. In open court, we will be there on 22nd. We welcome all Kenyans to come, but the matter as it rests today, rests with the judiciary, is the last line of defense, is our only arm of government that has not been captured, and we pray to God, because between this nation and disaster is the judiciary. That is our shield and defender. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we hear Senator Senator Kamau from Lamu. Asante sana. His Excellency Eugene Omalo. Kwa sababu ya kuweza kuandamana pamoja nasi, tukua hapa katika Karen Hospital. Tumekuja hapa subu ya leo kuweza kuja kuona His Excellency the Deputy President Rigade Gashagwa, ambaye nyote mnajua kwa mba kwanzia jana, aliweza kuletu hapa akiwa mgonjwa na anaendelea kupata matibabu tumeweza kuongea na daktari ambaye anamhudumia na amesema kwamba bado matibabu inaendelea na kwa sasa hawezi uh, kuweza kuongea kwa sababu anaendelea na, na matibabu jambo nataka niseme ni kwamba jana mnajua vile ilitendeka ya kwamba anaibu rais Rigathi Gachagua alikuwa aweze kujia katika bunge la senate Aweze kujitetea kutoka na mashitaka ambayo alikuwa mekelewa na mutuse Na mnajua kwa mba haikuweze kana kwa naibu wa rais kuja kujitetea Kwa sababu aliweza kugonjeka kabla ya ye kuja kujitetea katika jumba letu la senate Nataka niseme kwa mba ni jambo mbalo lili huzunisha zaidi Kuona kwa mba mwishimua naibu wa rais aliweza kuhukumiwa bila kusikizwa Ilo ni jambo mbalo limeweza kushangaza sana nchi yetu ya Kenya Kwa sababu sheria inasema kwamba kila mtu wako na, na haki ya kusikizwa Kama umeshitakiwa uko na haki ya kujitetea Lakini tunawana kwamba haku pata na fasi na haki ya kujitetea Sisi tuliweza uh, mawakili wake waliweza kuomba na fasi Apewe mpaka kesho siku ya jumamosi aweze kuja kujitetea katika lile bunge na baada sisi kujaribu kuunga jambo hilo mkono halikuwezekana waliendelea na kazi ambayo walikuwa wameamua kufanya na nataka niseme ya kwamba turujaribu kwa wezo wetu lakini tulishindwa kwa sababu kule bunge ni numbers ambayo zinafanya kazi nataka niwashukuru sana wale senators wa kutoka mlengo wa waipa Democratic Movement ambao alisimama na sisi katika hivita ya kutetea naibu wa rais kutoka na mashitaka ambayo sisi tulipo ya soma tuliona kwa mba ni mashitaka ambayo haya kuwa na mwelekeo na walisimama na sisi na tuliweza kupambana vile tuliweza lakini tunasema kwa mba tunaombea naibu wa rais afuwe ni ya haraka wakati wa mbapo wanaendelea kupata matibabu katika hospitali ya hapa Karen Hospital na anajua kama mwenyezi mungu ataweza kumisaidia na ataweza kutoka hospitali na ataendelea kuweza kufanya kazi yake mimi nataka niseme ya kwamba ni jambo ambalo ni lahusu ni saakilisha watu wa kaunti ya lamu na waliniambia kwamba nisimame na naibu rais 
ungesimama na yeye paka mwisho kulingana na mujibu na haki ya watu wa kaunti ya Lamu. Nataka nishukuru sana watu ambao walinituma katika hili bunge la Senate kuwakilisha na wanapotoa sauti ni wajibu wangu kama kiongozi kuona kwamba nimesimama na vile ambavyo wananchi wa kaunti ya Lamu wamenituma kufanya. Asante sana. Asanteni. I think that's okay. Kutajwa ni one thing na kuidhinishwa ni jambo lingine. Hivi tunavyozungumza His Excellency Rigathi Kachagua is the second deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. But we shall see what happens going forward kilinganisha kwamba kwamba yeye tayari mawakili wake wameenda kwa mahakama na vile vile bunge pia inaendelea na hizo shughuli zingine ambazo wamezitaja Another question Tawashukuruni sana Thank you Sateni